Hey guys, welcome back. <clears throat> it's been a while. I have a lot of things going on. Today, what's been on my mind a lot is going to the hospital when I was admitted and when I was in high school. A lot of people don't know that halfway through my senior year, I left my high school that I was growing up in and knew almost everybody at my high school to back to Santa Rosa, back to my hometown, to people that I really didn't know all that well. Uh, background story, I obviously deal with mental health. I have had a lot of suicidal thoughts when I was in high school, which I think is normal because of hormones and everything going on in high school, but I actually wrote these letters to my friends and to my mom and I've had them for a while in high school and I, I just never gave them out. It was just me explaining why I killed myself and I never, I've always thought about it but I never acted upon it. Um, one time my mom went into my room and she found my letters and the next thing I know I'm moving to my aunt and uncle's and I was I was so hurt I was so beyond like scared like I was abandoned again and I didn't know how to act and so I just felt it out finished what I had to do and it was it was a pretty good four months in April of 2012 a few weeks before my 18th birthday Senior year, I, I just couldn't do it. I was turning 18, I didn't know what to expect. My depression was at a high. I didn't, I felt so alone, I didn't know who to talk to. And so I decided to talk to my choir teacher who happened to live back in Bishop. And I was talking to her about not, not knowing what to do, but I knew that I didn't want to be alive anymore. And the reason why I told her, which a lot of people don't understand, is because I felt like she didn't have any chance to save me. She didn't, she couldn't. I was so far away that she couldn't help me. And that was not true. Um, I was in chemistry, I was in chemistry, no, I was in ceramics and I got called into the office that was the first time ever being called into the office so I knew I knew that my choir teacher saved me and at first I was hurt and I was upset and I was angry and I was I didn't want anything to do with my choir teacher at that moment I just I couldn't I couldn't handle it so they took me to a hospital in Santa Rosa and I stayed there for a good seven hours, eight hours before I was transported to Sacramento, the Sutter, Sutter Hospital in Sacramento. And I didn't know what was going on. And on the car right there, I was in an ambulance. And the paramedic that was sitting next to me kept telling me, you're so young, you have your whole life ahead of you, you know, I don't understand, and that's when I was trying to figure out, how do you describe mental health, how do you tell somebody who hasn't been through it, what you're going through, I don't know how to explain it, so I was just silent, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to say, I didn't, I just didn't. He just kept talking to me and he kept telling me that you're going to be okay. Like, you got this. You have your whole life ahead of you. You know, things change and you have a, he said it, you have a bright future. And he just kept repeating that for however many hours. It seemed like I was in the ambulance for days, but uh, the last bit of the journey to the hospital, he kept saying, you know, it's sad to see young people like you go through what you go through. And at first I thought he understood. He understood that there's nothing wrong with my life. It's just mental health. It's just depression. It's just anxiety. Um, he under I, th I thought he understood. 
And I think he was just putting on a show for me to, to show me that not to be upset, to not to be sad, to, to not to be scared. Uh, I was actually the par the paramedics last, uh, ride for the night. They were on a 72 hour shift or something. I don't remember, but it was, it was a long shift for them. And I was their last one. And and the guy looked at me and he said, I really hope you get through this. And at first I was like, get through what? Like, I don't understand. Like, you can't run away from depression. You can't run away from mental health. It's always going to be there. And I think he meant the hospital. Like, I, I think he hoped that I would get through whatever I had to get through to get out. He told me that he wished that there were so many easy patients that he had to take care of. And I was one of his best. And I think he was just saying that. Well, we got to the hospital and they checked me in. And the nurse, she told me, this is going to be very uncomfortable, but I need you to take your clothes off. I need to see where your cuts and your scars and... And if you're hiding anything, I, I need to know. And a lot of people don't know that I'm so, like, I'm, I'm ashamed of my scars. I'm ashamed of my cuts. They made me who I am, for sure, and I wouldn't regret it. I mean, I wouldn't go back and change it, but just mutilating my body the way that I did is very, I don't know, I, I find it very shameful. So I took my clothes off and she checked everything and I think the nurse has been through so much that my scars and everything didn't didn't phase her. But when I was telling her that I don't know why I am the way I am, she just she gave me a smile and she told me, you know, you're not the first one to come through here to tell me that and I knew that I was in good hands. Now, they assigned me to this room, and there was already a girl in there. And I didn't want to wake her, so I stayed in the clothes that I was in, and I just laid down. I didn't care. But the girl was talking in her sleep, and she was telling, she was saying, Oh, I effing hate you, you stupid beep. And I thought she was talking to me, so I was very intimidated. I was very scared. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. Um, I didn't come out of the room for a few hours. I didn't want to be around people. I felt like I left my, I let my aunt and uncle down because we were doing so well. And then all of a sudden, it just wasn't. So I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to leave my room. I just stayed in bed. One of the nurses there came in and told me, Honey, you need to participate or you're never going to leave. Now, they put me on a 5150, which is a 72-hour hold. And it felt... Being in there with people who deal with depression and anxiety and bipolar and everything from schizophrenia, it, I felt at home. And I know that sounds weird. <laughs> that sounds weird to some people, but you don't really come across people who have the same issues as you. My life is not horrible, but every single day I struggle to get up. Every single day I struggle to get myself ready. I do it, but it's a struggle. And it's not because I'm lazy. And it's not because I just don't want to do it. It's my mind and my body telling me, no, don't get out of bed. No, you can stay in bed. It's way more complicated than that. It's... 
it's really hard to explain. But being around people who knew what I was talking about, knew the, the exhaustion that I went through every day, I felt at peace. I felt like I belonged. And I eventually got up and I did my schoolwork and I ate and I did my therapy that I needed to. And the psychiatrist asked me, how are you going to kill yourself? And I told her any way I could. Anyway, I didn't have a plan. I just, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. And I was still angry at my choir teacher for even saying anything, for even trying to think that I had a future. I just didn't understand why or what she seen in me. Those few days were probably good days. They showed me how to cope. And although I'm 23 now, going on 24, I still sometimes don't know how to handle myself. But I'm very thankful that my choir teacher stepped in. I'm very thankful that she showed me that I could be something. I am 23 years old and I have two kids. I have two kids. And I wouldn't have had them without my choir teacher stepping in and saving me. I am in college. I have five more classes before I have my degree in my human services. And I vow to myself to help little scared teenagers like myself today. And that's all that I want to do is I want to help mental, mental health patients and tell them that there is hope. And although some days I don't believe that I'm going to get further than what I am, but I accomplish it. It's just mental health speaks to people on different levels. And for me, it's my anxiety and depression telling me I'm not good enough and I'm not worth it. That's one thing that I work on. And I wouldn't be lying to mental health patients saying that you can get through it and though there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Because that's what I firmly believe. On good days, I believe it. On bad days, I don't. And it's just, it's an uphill battle every day. But I vow to help mental health patients and hopefully inspire some to do, to go to school, to get their life together. I'm on the right track. But I wouldn't have gotten here without my choir teacher, without the paramedics, without the nurses, without my friend Kat that I made at the hospital. And I'm very grateful to have that experience, as psychotic as that may sound. I would go back. They show so many different coping skills and show you that you're not alone. There's a lot of people out there who struggle with what they struggle and they don't come forward. And so I'm, I'm very glad that I got that experience because it has showed me that I'm not alone. And the majority of the time, even though I have kids and loved ones surrounding me and supporting me, I do feel alone and I do feel like I'm never going to get better. And that may be the case, but I have people who love me and support me. And you, as a mental health person, you have people who love and support you and I don't know you. Or I do. And I love you. And I support you. And I'm here for you. And it's not an easy journey. But trust me, we will all get through it. I am here to end the stigma of mental health. Thank you.